Alright, so this isn't going to be a long how-to video. This is going to be more of a quick technical video uh, because I just figured that this might help out somebody who might be dealing with the same issues on a monitor like this. So this is a Time Crisis 3 cabinet and I was having some issues with this monitor. Still not perfect. I haven't adjusted the colors and the pin cushion isn't adjusted perfectly because I didn't have a mirror to be able to see it with when I was adjusting it. I had to keep going from the back to the front. So I just kind of got it close for now and I'll adjust it more later. But the issue I was having is uh, twofold. Number one, we had pin cushion issues. The screen was warped on the side. Number two, we had horizontal width issues, deflection issues. Um, basically what was happening, and I'll put a video clip in uh, that I took earlier of what was happening. Uh, basically, for some reason, the chassis was not scanning the full width of the tube. You could actually see where it was scanning and it was shrunken down. Uh, the other issue is that the horizontal adjustment would do nothing. Vertical uh, height and width, those worked fine. Horizontal, you could only adjust the position and only within that uh, section that you could tell it was scanning on the tube. You couldn't adjust the width at all. Pin cushion also did pretty much nothing. So uh, I ended up putting a cap kit in this because uh, I did have one capacitor that had obvious physical damage uh, and I also had a number of capacitors that were out of spec at least according to a generic chart I looked at. I don't know what the actual specs of those capacitors were supposed to be because the manufacturer didn't list them. So I ended up deciding to go ahead and recap the kit because that tends to fix a lot of issues monitors have. Turns out from some reading that may have not been necessary but it's done now and I ruled that out as a problem. So we'll come around to the back of this now. So this is a Neneo MS9-29SU chassis and this was serviced before. According to the stickers it was serviced around 07. There was also a tag but I took that off. Now you can tell that they reflowed some solder joints, replaced a couple components. Uh, including I think a few capacitors. Um, these boards do have issues with cold solder joints and I suspected that cold solder joints might be an issue after I replaced the caps and that didn't fix it. And the reason I say that is because although hitting it, and when I say hitting it I mean I would just give the frame a little whack to shake it up a little bit, uh, that will usually cause, uh, if you have cold solder joints that will typically uh, cause some kind of effect on the picture. It didn't in this case, uh, but the reason I thought it might be a cold solder joint is because um, a while back when I first started having this issue, um, one day I was able to actually get it adjusted to the point where it would fill up the entire screen and look pretty good, uh, but then somebody told me that I was having a gun issue, came in, turns out I didn't have an issue with the guns, but the screen was back to being warped and it was back to not being adjustable again. Uh, and when I first turned it on on that day uh, what happened is it turned on and it looked good it was filled up the adjustments I had made were still in effect but then uh, it went back to being shrunken and then came back to normal again then shrunk again and never changed after that which points me to either a partially failed component or a cold solder joint so after the cap kit didn't work and I brought it back here, I ended up uh, reflowing a whole bunch of joints, especially the ones in this area, which is for, uh, which in this area a lot of these components are for the horizontal deflection, which is the main problem it was having. That didn't fix it. So as a last ditch resort, uh, before I just gave up for the night and went home, I decided to spray a bunch of areas with a uh, canned air duster held upside down. And what that does is when you hold an air duster upside down and spray it, it'll basically cool anything that it touches because you're spraying the liquid out instead of the air. And I found that when I sprayed this little component over here, this is Q508, when I sprayed that, I found that it went back to being normal. So I thought, oh, well that component's failed. Not quite. I could not reproduce that effect. Um, it stayed that way for a little while, then went back to being shrunken, and when I sprayed it again, it didn't go back to being normal. However, after spraying that general area and letting it cool a little bit, after a while it went back to being full. So I knew it was an issue with that uh, somewhere in that area. Now I'm going to turn this off, pull it out, 
turn it over so you can see it. Okay, so we're looking at the back of the uh, chassis now. I just tilted it up so you can see a little bit. And you'll want to make sure you discharge everything on these monitor chassis uh, before you do stuff like this or you could really end up hurting yourself. Um, now right here is the bottom where Q508 is attached to the rest of the circuitry. Now when I first redid, reflowed the solder, I didn't mess with that component at all because it had obviously been reflowed at some point and I didn't see any issues with it. But once I sprayed it with the air duster, that it became very obvious to me that there was an issue in that area. So I decided to reflow it just to be sure. Good thing I did because as soon as I put some heat to it, the pad for the solder actually just completely lifted up. Turns out only one of the solder pads for that component is actually intact. It's the one on the very bottom. Uh, not sure how well you'll be able to see it with this in, uh, without this in macro. Hold on a second. Okay, so we're in macro mode now. You can see this horrible looking uh, solder work a little more clearly. But basically only the bottom of the three pins was actually uh, had a good connection. The other two, the pads just lifted right off. So that's basically the same as having a cold solder joint or an intermittent connection. It's no good. That's what was causing all the horizontal deflection problems. So what I've done here uh, because there's no saving that solder pad once it lifts off the PCB is I just took some wire and I completely bypassed those pads uh, just went to the nearest point where the uh, trace went and bypassed it completely so now it functions normally and reliably now and I know I know it's not the, uh, the prettiest repair in the world but the important thing is that it works the phone is now ringing which is annoying uh, we're going to take you out of macro mode and wait for the phone to stop ringing. Okay, phone stopped ringing. Uh, as I was saying, not the prettiest repair in the world, but that's not what matters. What matters is that it works and works reliably, which it does. So, if you've got issues with a uh, Nano MS9 or even an MS8 with your horizontal deflection, check all your components in the horizontal deflection circuit and check all your connections on the underside because that could easily be the problem. It's a very common uh, issue with these boards to have cold solder joints and obviously um, the PCB itself isn't the most durable on these things. I've had I actually had a couple pads lift off during uh, the recap. Uh, but anyway just wanted to share that uh, hopefully this will help someone out in the future who's dealing with one of these monitors.